continuing our big picture uh, for trig, let's do a, just a real quick example. Suppose we do have a 20 meter hypotenuse. Let's say it's something going around in a circle. And I happen to know that it's 20 meters long. And at this instant, it's 30 degrees from the horizontal. And I want to know how far that distance is going to be. Well, there's a couple ways to do it. But they're all, they're all equivalent is, is, the, is the main thing. If that's x, then I know that x over 20, that's the adjacent over hypotenuse, if we want to think about it in terms of triangle trig, um, that's equal to cosine of theta. Well, we have to know cosine of 30 degrees, um, and that's root 3 over 2. And so there's x over 20, so x is just going to be 20 times root 3 over 2 or 10 root 3. Now, of course, if this had been not one of our special angles, this just would have appeared as something out of the calculator that's not as pretty, okay? And we wouldn't have necessarily got an exact answer. Oh, and that's meters, and that's meters, okay? That's And that's a great way to do it. That's probably how, how most people want to do it. I just want to point out that if you really love the unit circle, again, we can think about it as we solve the same problem on the unit circle, okay? Let's call that like x prime, just to be uh, to have a little different letter for it, x prime. That's a 30 degree angle still in that small triangle because it's a similar triangle, okay. And so that x prime is exactly cosine of 30 degrees, or pi over six. That's root three over two. And then I've just got a similar triangle situation. I've got one is to root three over two, as x is to 20. Well, that's basically what I got here. X is to 20 as root three over two is to 1, and it's the same math. So even that, even if whether you think about it as one single triangle and this is the definition, or it's a scaled version of our unit circle triangle, you get the same answer. They really are equivalents. It's super crucial. OK, so that's one of the generalizations. Getting away from the unit circle in the first quadrant is just making the circle bigger, or equivalently having a hypotenuse that's not um, just um, just one unit length. OK, now what about the other generalization? And that's going outside of the first quadrant. Okay. What if we have an angle here? So now this is really this idea, again, of angle as an amount of rotation is probably the best way to think about it. Let's still call it theta. The book sometimes calls it t, um, emphasizing maybe that it's like a distance along the unit circle. Okay. Um, so let's go back to where it's the unit circle for a second, and then we'll combine both generalizations. Okay. And so then this is really where it starts for, with our book in section 4.2. Um, their original definition of trig functions, that it can be anywhere around the unit circle. And if it is the unit circle, it's still just consistent with what we were saying in the first quadrant. The cosine of theta, even when theta is this weird thing that goes further out than the first quadrant, which is less familiar when we're coming from uh, right triangle trig, um, it's just the x-coordinate. And the sine of theta is just the y-coordinate on the unit circle. Okay, um, and no matter what quadrant we're going to be in. And then the question is just how do you actually calculate that? Um, and, and how do you leverage what we know about triangle trig? Is this just completely new? As soon as you get side, outside of the first quadrant, is it completely unfamiliar? No, what we've discovered is that, hey, you know what? Here's a right triangle right here. And this is an angle. This is a, an acute angle with a right, with a, um, with inside a right triangle with unit hypotenuse. I can totally figure out the X and Y except for their signs just by looking at this right triangle and using right triangle trig. And in fact, if you choose, as is the standard thing, to focus on that angle to the x-axis, the close, the smallest angle of the x-axis, it's the acute angle that this hypotenuse makes to the x-axis, that's theta prime, and that's called the reference angle. OK. And I've got a separate video just about reference angle calculations. But So for example, uh, suppose this was 3 pi over 4. OK. Um, and I'd want to get, let's say, sine of 3 pi over 4. OK. That's that y. And it really is exactly that y with a positive, because we're still, it's still uh, in the second quadrant. y is a positive number. So it really is just the length of that guy in this right triangle. What's that guy? In this case, that's going to be pi over 4. Or if it's more familiar to you, 45 degrees. OK. Um, because I've gone almost all the way to, one way to think about it is I go all the way to pi and then I come back by pi over 4, okay? And so it's just going to be the standard value for a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle, okay? And then the cosine is a little more interesting 
because that's again going to be root 2 over 2 except with a sign because it's a 45 45 90 triangle or equivalently it's just what you would see if you were doing this triangle over here um, but now it's going to be negative okay and since I'm doing a big picture I don't want to do lots of examples of that I just want to emphasize that these are not just because they're in different sections they're not redoing and coming up with new versions of trig and like okay which context am I in what does cosine or sine mean they always mean things that are compatible whenever the two definite any two definitions overlap okay um, so the reference angle is a good strategy the other strategy that people often use is they look at something in a weird quadrant and then they visualize either flipping or rotating it into the first quadrant here we could flip this which would change the sign of y but not of x and then that would relate it to something that's in our home base the first quadrant Okay, so that's another strategy. Um, so let's combine these guys. This is where we get to sort of section 4.4 .4 in our book. This is Larson's precalculus. Okay, combine these two generalizations. Okay, and nothing really new comes out of combining them. It's just now we've got a circle that has radius, let's say 100, let's say centimeters or one meter. Yeah. Or that would be simpler. But let's just leave it as 100 centimeters, okay? And I've got an angle here. I know I've rotated a certain angle over. And what if I would like to get the position of this point on that circle with this radius and that angle? I'd like to get the y and the x for that, okay? How is that going to work? Well, it's the same deal, okay? So um, here, here it's you can do it again with the triangle trig, reduction to triangle trig, or reduction to the unit circle. Let me again focus on this idea of reducing the unit circle. So I'm going to sort of exaggerate how big a, a one centimeter circle would be. Let's say this guy has radius one. That's the unit circle. Okay. And right in here, I know it's kind of small. There's a, a similar triangle. Let's just kind of blow it up. So there's that similar triangle. And I know exactly what the x and y coordinate of that guy would be. Okay. So let's call those like x prime and y prime. I hate to overnotate, but I don't want to call them x and y because they're not the same thing. Okay, that, That's that same angle. It's the same t -t 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 coming from the positive x-axis. That's exactly the same angle because these are just going in the same direction. Okay, and on the unit circle, I know what the heck that is. x prime is exactly cosine theta. y prime is exactly sine theta. And now I just have to scale up. x and y are on a triangle that's 100 times bigger. It's a similar triangle. And so x is just going to be 100 cos theta, y is 100 sine theta. There's a very nice thing we can get out of that. We, we can just get the general thing right now. It's too tempting not to do it. I, I don't want to maybe put, put in too many letters here, but it's so tempting. If for any general r, for any general radius, I can get a very, very nice master formula. We're going to see you see this all over the place in all kinds of situations. That's a very nice way. If I tell you the angle, and this can be anywhere in 0 to 360, or anywhere, it doesn't even have to be 0 to 360, right? Or 0 to 2 pi. Any angle and any radius, or hypotenuse length, in other words, and any quadrant, this gives me the relationship of if I tell if I know the angle and the radius or the hypotenuse, it tells me the x and y coordinates. That's really groovy. Okay. Um, and that naturally combines both generalizations. We've let, this is no longer one, and this is no longer assumed to be in the first quadrant. Okay. So, for example, if theta, let's do it in radians this time, if theta was 7 pi over 6, and again, I'm going to focus on an exact answer just because I don't want to have to go to the calculator, then, and the r was 100, let's go back to that example was 100, then the x coordinate is just going to be 100 cosine 7 pi over 6. Cosine 7 pi over 6, we should have that memorized. That's minus root 3 over 2, and so this is minus 50 root 3 because of two cancels. And then y, ooh, getting low here, y is going to be 100 sine 7 pi over 6. Let me not get too low. And that's going to be 100 times minus 1 half. And that's going to be minus 50. There we go. Very, very nice that this summarizes that whole story. Okay, let me just mention, um, since I'm on the big picture here, there's a whole part of trig I have not mentioned yet. And you might think, wow, if he claims to give the big picture, this is lame. Okay. Um, oh, let me, let me actually just say one thing. Um, 
this idea of the similar triangles, it's really, really, really important. You know, if like I've got the similar triangle and like this is 1 here and this is 10. Okay, let me just make this, try to make this really clear. Um, it's very easy for kids to get confused or any student to try to get confused. Like, okay, on this guy, this has hypotenuse of 1. This guy lives on the unit circle. So I believe in this context of this triangle, like cosine theta, the biggest it can be is 1 and the smallest it can be is minus 1. Because after all, it's an x coordinate on the unit circle. That only varies between minus 1 and 1. But then as soon as you get to this idea of expanding the circle and going around, often people are like, oh, that's on a bigger circle. Maybe now cosine theta can be between minus 10 and 10. That's not right. Cosine theta, if you give me the angle, I don't have to say, oh, on what triangle or on what size circle is this being calculated. The cosine is what it is, only based on the angle. And it can also always be calculated on the unit circle. It's always between minus 1 and 1. How is that compatible with the bigger triangle? It's compatible with the bigger triangle for, because, for example, maybe this is like 8 and this is like 6. Yes, this x-coordinate is 8, but if you're not on the unit circle, if your hypotenuse is not 1, you can't just read this off and call it the cosine. The cosine is always a ratio, and when this isn't 1, that ratio just doesn't, doesn't just default to be x. The cosine here is 8 over 10, not just 8. That's 0.8, and that is a small number. Okay, so that's that's something that I know um, classes get confused about easily. The cosine and the sine are defined on the unit circle. You can always figure them out on the unit circle. And when you go to bigger triangles, remember you have to do a ratio. Okay, uh, so just one more generalization: the other four trig functions. Okay, because this is mentioned in these first three sections, I wanted to not completely um, ignore it. Okay, there's some great stuff we can say about these, and I want I want this to come out in our in my class of investigation, so I'm not going to give too much away. But if you've got a triangle, okay, then and again, let's go back to let's go back to our home base for for now. Unit circle. Here's x. Here's y. Okay. There's all these other ratios you could do. Just because we took opposite over over hypotenuse, that doesn't mean that's the only ratio we could take, or adjacent over hypotenuse. There's all kinds of things, and in particular, like opposite over adjacent. I talk about that in my classes. That's the slope of this line. That's y over x. It's rise over run. Boy, that's pretty important. That's the slope. Okay, that better have a name. And that's just called tangent theta. Okay, and we'll talk about. I'll talk about it, at least in my class. Maybe I'll do a video. But why is it called tangent? Okay, um, what does that have to do with things touching? Which is what tangent comes from. Okay, and then there's the other the other ones. There's adjacent over opposite which is the cotangent, and there's a hypotenuse, there's two more you can think of, hypotenuse over adjacent, which for various reasons is called the secant, why not the cosecant, what's up with that, because it seems to be one over cosine, it is one over cosine, what's up with that, and let's see, over here we have some room, hypotenuse over opposite is the cosecant. Okay. Seems like a lot of stuff to memorize. Okay, the truth is that these trig functions are so important that any tiny little bit of labor saving, like saying, "Okay, yeah, I know this is secretly one over cosine," because it's just the the, the reciprocal of adjacent over hypotenuse. Why don't I just always do it as this? <sighs> that totally didn't come out, did it? Ah, there it is. Just kidding. Um, forgot that I didn't have the whole bottom of that thing. Why not just write it all as one always as one over cosine? Well, because it comes up so 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 often. Um, that it's worth it to have these abbreviations. It's not to make your life harder. It's if you eventually use trig a lot, it's worth it to have all these four other um, notions. This guy, I think it's a no-brainer to have this guy. This tangent is far and away more important than these other three, and it's almost as important as sine and cosine because the slope of a, of a, a line is such an important thing. But we discover eventually that these guys are worth doing as well. Okay, and then we have to we have to really understand what are all the relationships between these guys, and they all come either from the fact that we're thinking about a right triangle, or remi remembering that we're on a circle, and those are basically equivalent, and that's where I want to stop.